separate them. You got to blend them. But but this time, rather than our focus being too much on the lower body, although there's got to be some, our focus is predominantly going to be at our core. So you know we're getting a different feel out of this exercise than we did when we were focused a little bit more on the lower body. But there's a blending, and you'll see when you put the program together lower body, core, extremity, that all kind of flow together, right? So there's not a real break in the program. They just kind of flow off of each other, right? Okay, so our main focus is going to be on the XLD cell pattern or intersegmental coordination pattern. So sitting core separation, you can do uh, on a med ball, uh, or I mean like on a Swiss ball, right? Uh, larger one, let's say 65 centimeter or 75 centimeter sitting. I'm going to do it in a swivel chair. It doesn't really matter, but you want to have essentially a, a, a relatively unstable s surface and particularly with respect to the rotation, okay? So, and what you're going to do with this is you're just going to sit in the chair and all I'm going to do is I'm going to, with essentially an upright posture, I'm going to rotate relative to my spine, I mean perpendicular to my spine, and then I'm going to engage back, okay? So let me explain. This looks so stupid simple, it seems like, well, how can I even be doing anything? But the first thing you'll notice, and, and sometimes even high-level players don't have the awareness that they aren't really rotating perpendicular to their spine, right? They've been masking it and getting away with it, but they're really thoracic bending and doing weird stuff, and they're not really stabilizing, they don't engage the core effectively, and they've got back problems or shoulder problems, right? So the first thing that you want to focus on is, here's my axis of rotation, rotate perpendicular. So if I'm sitting behind, it's kind of hard for me to flip it around with this chair, but if I'm standing behind the person, I want to see the upper thoracic moving perpendicular to the torso. So draw a line right down the middle of their back, right up and down their spine. And you tell, you can even cue them that way. Put your hand right on the, right on the crease of their back, right down their spine. Say, hey, this is the axis of rotation. And then take your, your fingers and just draw right along the, the scaps, right along the upper thoracic. Say, move this part of your upper torso, which is all this up in here, move this perpendicular to this. And watch them go like this. Or watch them, watch them you know, reach as they bend. So now all I'm doing is thoracic bending. I'm, not, I'm bending my spine, right? And it's funny because what I think is funny, or interesting anyway, is so much emphasis is put on thoracic uh, um, restriction. But, but to some degree, the, the problem is not thoracic restriction, but to some degree, thoracic stability. The ability, and I don't mean stability in terms of range of motion, I mean in terms of if I'm doing a bunch of this stuff, I'm not rotating, right? So if I turn and bend, I haven't rotated, I just bent. I, didn't, I just thoracic bent, I didn't rotate. So if you hold the person and you say, here's your axis of rotation, of course you do it from behind them, right? Here's the axis of rotation, Here's the, here's your, here's, you know, of course, do it from behind, right? Here's the, what you're moving perpendicular. Okay, now watch behind. Did you stay stable and did you actually rotate the upper thoracic? Well, yeah, you did. So, you know, you had good posture, you rotated, boom, okay? So, here, so the first thing is giving them an awareness of what rotating perpendicular to their spine actually feels like. Well, you have a lot of people that reach with the thoracic bend this direction and then drop their pelvis to look like they're rotating. And when you get them to rotate perpendicular spine, they're going to go, I'm reverse pivoting. That can't be right. And you say, no, you're not reverse pivoting, pivoting actually. You're rotating perpendicular to your spine. What you're normally doing is you're thoracic bending and then, and, then, and then dropping your pelvis to look like you're rotating, but you haven't gotten any real rotation there. You've only done a bunch of thoracic bending. So that's the first thing is the awareness of rotation, axis of rotation, rotating. Boom. Wow, okay, that feels different than what I'm used to. Okay, I get the sense, okay, I kind of feel it. So the first is awareness of orientation in space. That's the number one thing, right? And then the second thing is, when I do that, and this way you get guys who do this, they kind of reach and then drop and look like they rotate, and you get them to stabilize with an awareness of it and rotate, and all of a sudden they go, holy crap, I feel my core. I feel the oblique. You feel that like literally off your lead hip, right up through the lower abdominals, right up into this part of the rib cage. They feel it. For the first time, they say, wow I, never, I, wow, I can actually feel that, where when I bend and tip and twist, I don't feel anything. So, so the first thing is spatial awareness or orientation awareness. That's the stability part. And then it's, oh, when I do that, I actually create an engagement here for the first time. That's the beginning of the XLD cell component, right? Now let's look at the lower half of it. In order to...